Hey guys, how's it going? My name's The Breath, and welcome to another challenge video. Today, I'm asking the question, can you beat Pokemon Ruby with only a Beedrill? Some of you may be thinking, why Beedrill? It's a final form Pokemon. But for those people, I say, take a look at its stats. For what we're talking about here, a third stage evolution, it is abysmal. With a grand total of only 395 stats across all of them, I am actually very disappointed. Yes, 90 physical attack is lovely and 75 speed is decent. But look at the defense and special attack. Wow. I am genuinely convinced that the skulls of newborn babies, when they haven't even formed yet and they still have that little weird mushy thing at the top, could take more physical damage than a Beedrill could. And if there's anyone that's still not convinced about how bad this Pokemon is, let's take another third stage evolution from the same game that these were introduced in, Pidgeot. They're both found in the early part of the game and yet Pidgeot evolves to have 479 base stats and 101 speed, 80 attack and 83 HP. Compare them now, it's shocking. And yet I've chosen to do this one because I thought it would be something quick. For those of you that don't know, it might not be in my Discord, and if you're not, why not? Click the link down below and get your asses in there. But why quick? Well, at the time this video is released, I am moving into a new flat tomorrow. Yeah, I've been managing packing up all of my stuff, arranging it to be shipped down to my new flat, and recording a challenge video all in the same time. So I think I might not be pushing it when I ask, please slap that like button, because a lot of work's gone into this one. And if you happen to be a fan of this content or the channel in general, why not hit that subscribe button and tap that bell to find out when I release new content every week. But let's not dilly-dally around anymore, shall we? Let's crack on with this game by talking about the rules. So firstly, of course, as ever, Beedrill only in battle apart from the 7th gym. No items in battle and TM usage is allowed. But to add a little bit of spice to this one, no cheese moves. Now, I'm going to have to remember that one for later on in the video, but what defines a cheese move? I'm calling it something like sand attack, double team, things that make it more difficult for your opponent to hit you and make it easier for you to hit them. That is a cheese move. But anyway, logistics aside, shall we begin? The game starts and we choose the male character, giving ourselves the name of Breath 2. Why 2? No, not because this is the electric boogaloo, but because after the last video, I'm a changed man, people. No, clearly at the end of the last one, I had to become a changed man because for whatever reason, some people couldn't figure out that those were all jokes. I know, unbelievable. But unfortunately, because of cancel culture and how far those limbs reach into the internet and the, the caliber of people that are getting snatched up by it, I will no longer be allowed to make any jokes. This channel will be completely joke free. You won't get any sorts of puns about Beedrill's hard stingers or how I named the save file bitches be drilling with a winky face. Ah, oh, who am I kidding? This channel is a joke. I make comedic references in my videos, there's a disclaimer on my about page, and I want to say now, before we start anything else, this is a serious part of the video and I apologise for putting it so early, but if you get offended by any of the jokes that I make in any of my videos, Please feel free to tell me in the comments, but you don't have to do it in an abusive and attacking manner. I do not stand for it, and I am particularly scathing about a single comment I received on the last one. But no, this is a quick note to cancel culture. I don't care. I will say what I think is funny, and I will only say something that I stand by to the level of humour that I would say to my own mother. If you have a problem with that, go and bother someone else because you're not going to fold me. But right, angry breakfast side. 
Shall we get on with this one? Yeah, so we've named ourselves Breath 2 because I have to be the second incarnation of myself. And we go north to choose our starter. We've replaced Trico with Beedrill, so our rival, well, not rival, May in this case, will have a Torchic and that line. Just makes things a little bit more difficult for us. Not as difficult as when we realised that Beedrill's first move and only attacking moves for 20 levels, or 15 because we're level 5, is Fury Attack, a notoriously unreliable and not powerful at all normal type move that hits for between 2 and 5 turns. On the flip side however, the early part of the game is nice and easy and we beat the Poochiena. In the lab, we give it the nickname of Jarian? Jarian? I'm sorry I've really butchered the name there. Let me know in the comments how to pronounce your name. But I've had this request for Beardrill for months now and I can only apologise that I haven't got around to doing it sooner because you're right. This turned out to be a fun run to record and I thank you for your suggestion. But I'll be honest, the early game doesn't have any sort of hiccups apart from the fact that Beedrill doesn't level up very easily. For anyone wondering what our level up moveset looks like, I'll just pause the footage and put it up here. We won't learn another attacking move until level 20, and that's only Twin Needle. A pitifully weak move, 25 base power, but guaranteed to hit twice and has a chance of poisoning. Okay, so it's not all bad, but it could be a hell of a lot better. Hence why I've said I'm allowed TMs. Actually, I feel like the TM pool could really make this a lot easier. So I'm gonna add another little challenge into the rules. If I use a TM to replace a move, I am not allowed to replace that move unless I have no other alternative. And by that, I mean I have to be level 100 and still not able to do it with that moveset. Anyway, killing time aside, we do end up eventually at Rustborough City and Roxanne's gym. As we approach the door, we realise that she has in fact put on that red light and we head in with a big grin on our face. Unfortunately, that grin is very swiftly removed when we realise just how brutally powerful her team actually is. We were lucky and leveled up to level 20 on one of her gym trainers, learning that twin needle move, so it made the fight just a little bit easier, but it did take a few times. So we start there and she leads off with her Geodude, and that thing has very high defense, but that's about it. With no real issues, we managed to get rid of it and she brings out her nose pass. I was a little bit concerned at how little damage I was actually doing to it, but it didn't last long and eventually that thing falls and that's the first badge down and a major roadblock that we've just overcome. So we leave the gym and we witness someone getting mugged, meaning we're diving into a cave head first to knock out a dog, rescue a bird and get on a boat that sails us all the way over to the island of Dewford. Here I first decide that I'm going to make my way through the cave, yes, without even beating the gym. We don't need flash, mama ain't raised no bitch. So having navigated the puzzle that I must have done at least a hundred times now, we arrive at Stephen and have a brief chat which culminates in us delivering a letter to him so we can head into the gym and challenge Brawly. We are resistant to fighting type attacks and, well, he's a fighting type user, so, well, it doesn't really need explaining. I mean, two and two makes four. No minus one, no three, no quick maths. We're not doing that, no jokes, remember. But with the second badge rightfully in our possession, we make our way back on that boat and over to Slateport. Here we find Doc in the dockyard and go up to meet Captain Stern in the museum. We go up and have a chat with him and ultimately end up whispering in his ear and saying, I'm the captain now. Yes, I made a joke. Cancel culture can't get me. I hope you like breath ASMR. But we end up getting ambushed by Team Magma Grunts who are far too easy to dispatch and end up bumping into Maxi for the first time. He tries to lecture me and has the nerve to tell me that he must know exactly how I'm like as a person and that I cannot respect women because of some of the jokes that I've made. 
despite the fact that I've very clearly made jokes about men in the same light as well. And it gets put off by us using the classic Steve Hofstetter line of, I do have a reason to respect women, I have a genetic history of them in my family. For example, my mother was a woman, I respect her greatly, she raised me. I have a grandmother who's a woman and I respect her greatly because she raised my mum. It skipped a generation with me for some reason, but I imagine if I had a daughter, she'd be a woman because I'm a carrier and that's how this works. But Maxie can't get his small brain around the fact that actually there's a difference between jokes and real life, and decides to just shrug off on his way. That leaves open the path to us towards Moorville and we have to fight May again. Did I have any problems in here? No, I actually didn't, because on the way I learnt the move Rage, a useless 20 base power move. But every time you use it and you get hit by an attack subsequently, it raises your physical attack, which could be manipulated. So going into that fight, why not use it? It's not going to be around forever and it's certainly useless in games like Gen 1. But we do it. We go in there, we use Rage, we up our attack stat and ultimately we beat May before Morville. Which means that we have to head in there and fight Wally. He is a massive Wally. He has a Rolts and I have a Bug type move. Yeah, that thing didn't stand a chance, did it? Knocking him aside opens the way to Watson. Now, this proved to be a lot more difficult than I actually believed it would have been. I don't really understand why, but I think it's got something to do with the fact that, in total, I've got exactly zero moves that can do anything against the Steel type at this point in time. Of course, if anyone knows what I tend to do for Ruby, Sapphire, and to a degree Emerald, I have caught myself a team of Zigzagoon, and they will act as pickup slaves. Ruby and Sapphire have a slightly altered pickup chart to that of Emerald and subsequent generations, but it is easily manipulated here, to the point where, right from Battle 1, you got a chance to pick up rare candies, and you know exactly how useful they will be in a run like this. Right from the off, I got very lucky amassing a decent collection of rare candies before the third gym. Amazing, because I needed some to get through this fight. Later on, after many tries, and I think a couple of beers as well, yeah, they're back. But somehow, by sheer fortune and fortune alone, and I don't know how it happened, we get a run where we knock out his first, we knock out his second, and his bullshit magneton also goes down. We've claimed the third badge, and if I could do a backflip, I would have done a backflip, because my... That took too long. Oh, but you want to know what's worse? There are worse fights coming up. And I'm nearly out of beers at this point. Oh, I'm, I'm a broken man. Send help. Please send help. You still have to fight Flannery. Oh, no. All breakdowns aside and sadness over my, my final beer. Being consumed. We make our way through Meteor Falls and up to the pinnacle of Mount Chimney where we have to face off with that blackguard Maxi again. Now, he took too long. I'll f I genuinely sat there for a moment and I thought, I'm moving flat in a couple of days. I've been behind on my recording, that's my fault. But I'm not going to get this challenge done before I move. And then it happened. I learnt from my mistakes. I went into my Tiena and I used Rage instead of Twin Needle. Because Intimidate is the worst thing we could come up against in these types of runs where we're relying on physical attackers. So we use Rage. And after each hit that somehow we can tank, don't ask me how, I think it's got something to do with the fact they're special attacks, but our attack stack gets raised. And it gets raised to a point where not even his camera up and not even his goal back can cause any sort of issues. They don't stop me. Nothing will stop me. Nothing stops a breath on a warpath. And that warpath, we'll try that again, shall we? Come in. And that warpath leads me straight to Flannery. 
That wasn't so fucking hard to get out now, was it? Oh, but you want to know what is hard? The stinger of a bee drill, and I hear it can get into some very nasty places if you let it. Not to mention those arms. What are those? What are those stingers for hands? What is he? Oh, oh, oh. I hope it doesn't work like that. Ugh. Well, having cracked open the vodka and done multiple shots to try and get the image of Beedrill copulation out of my mind, we tackle the fire type gin and. We, we, yeah, we struggle. We, we, we struggle about as much as you'd expect a bug type to struggle in a fire type gym. But, um. Somehow Beedrill made this harder than Shedinja ever did, and I don't understand why. Because this was hell. It took me multiple times, it took me multiple resets, it took me multiple rare candies, multiple levels. And to be honest with you, come the end of it, we claim the badge and we leave the fiery red head. My dog clearly wasn't very impressed with that joke. But in all seriousness, for as long as it took, we did manage to do it, and it actually wasn't as bad as it possibly could have been. I don't think it'll be the worst encounter of the run, but it will certainly be up there. And that means that with four badges down, our next stop is to head home. It's to head back to where we came. It's to look our father in the eyes and say to him, Who's the daddy now? <coughs> Fuck, I got the Rona. Oh, that joke literally gave me coronavirus again. Norman. He was not as bad as he could have been. The problem we've got is that Twin Needle is our best move here. And it comes with a chance to poison. And he has Facade, that's his little move, that doubles in power, I believe, if he's under a status affliction such as, oh, I don't know, poisoning? But yeah, honestly, I did expect this fight to take longer than it actually did. And in the end, he wasn't that difficult. As you can see, it's just a case of rage, twin needle, whatever I used in the end. And um, yeah, nothing really memorable stands out about the Norman fight as it does for later battles. So I guess the right thing to do would just be to move on. But where do I decide to go? Well, I take a different route to what I would normally do. Sailing down on the back of a zigzagoon, I should say surfing down, but sailing sounds better. Back to Jewford. Here we head into the town hall and speak to a man who suddenly appeared, who gives us the TM for Sludge Bomb, our most powerful move in the arsenal. Stab, 90 base power physical move, couldn't get much better than that if you ask me. But. With that done, we have to make our way through the linear portion of the game to the Weather Institute where fuck all happens and we have a fight with May across the bridge. Now, we've got Sludge Bomb. It is literally as simple as three Sludge Bombs. She doesn't give us any sort of challenge and I chose to give her a Combuscan and it can't do anything. Why? Because we're quick, we're hitting hard and we do it with a move that doesn't have any resistances to it. So with that done, we then get to make our way through to Fortree City, and if you get offended by jokes, look away now. Fortree City is the home of the flying type gym, and of course that means we have to fight the queen of the flappy paddle gearbox. Yes, we have to fight the bird type using Winona. Well, lads, lasses, and laughs, thank you, Knight of Psychosis, for giving me the correct gender-neutral term to use there. I really do appreciate that, actually. Thank you very much. Can anyone spot the problem with the flying-type gym in this challenge? If you said anything along the lines of, you're a bug-type, you're weak as shit, and you've got nothing that can really do any damage to her skarmory, then congratulations, because you would be absolutely correct. All of the above are issues that I had to encounter during this portion. And it became apparent very early on in my attempt that we just weren't going to cut it at the level we had. Now luckily, my Zigzagoon had been pretty useful for me. We'd collected a good chunk of rare candies and I actually popped all of the ones that were available to me. And I tried at this level over 
and over and over and over and it just I wasn't getting anywhere but each failure gave me something to build off of it gave me more knowledge knowledge such as how part of this strategy was going to have to be relying on the RNG and part of it was going to be knowing when to use what moves now because I've defined a cheese move as something that makes it easier for you to hit the opponent or harder for them to hit you for example I don't class focus energy as a cheese move I mean all it does is raise the chance of getting a critical hit now it doesn't guarantee it um, it doesn't make your attacks instantly hit harder like something say swords dance would so I don't have any gripes with saying that it was a case of getting off that focus energy and using rage to a point where you have to goad the AI you have to physically reset until you can find out which combination of the two moves forces the AI to hit you with an aerial ace of which I think we can survive three then it becomes a case of learning which Pokemon can hit you with an aerial ace without doing any significant damage for example Swellow has Aerial Ace and it has Endeavor and both of those can cause me a lot of problems because I'll use Rage, get its health down, use Endeavor and I end up being completely unable to beat the rest of it even though I can completely one shot most of her team you know the Altaria, the Pelipper, the Swellow they can all go down in one sludge bomb but you can't beat Skarmory so what I have to do is use Rage and goad her AI into raising my attack up enough that when I get to the Skarmory, Twin Needle does just a little bit more than nothing and hope, hope so much, that I end up with a critical hit. And fortunately for me, as you can see, I do end up with one and we've managed to get past what I envision to be the worst section of this game by a long shot and we do claim the sixth badge we gain the ability to fly except that's kind of useless to us because the next place we need to go is Mount Pyre up here on the pinnacle of the mountain Maxi announces to us that he has been blue balled by the old lady and by that I mean he's gone and snatched the blue orb we can't make jokes in this day and age unfortunately guys this is a PG channel now so the old lady pretty much smacks us with the red orb and says get your ass after him son which is exactly what I do we fly on the zigzagoon over to Slateport and head over to gate crash captain Stern's interview having already announced that we are the captain we get a little bit put off when we realize that Maxi stolen our submarine yeah while it was underwater seems legit game not gonna lie but then the next bit we have to do is obviously the fun bit we skip over the magma hideout nothing ever happens in there and we get ourselves to moss deep and we have to fight tate and eliza but before then i make some critical decisions i go back to the magma hideout and i collect the master ball and i'm going to do something now that hopefully hurts each of you deeply to the core i head over to jewford and collect the old rod and yes this is going exactly where you think it is I go and fish myself up a single level 9 magic carp and oh yes, I catch that thing, that useless thing, in a master ball. So then we head back to Tate and Eliza's gym and should I be scared? This is kind of a double edged sword because although I'm weak to psychic, they are weak to bug and I have twin needle which although its base power is low, our attack stat is so high that over the course of two hits, I'm feeling semi-confident here. I know that we can probably tank at least one sidekick. So we get into the fight, and I use Twin Needle on Soul Rock because it also knows Flamethrower, and that thing goes down in a single hit, causing Lunatone to use its sidekick on a Magikarp that doesn't know an attacking move. Big brain IQ aside, that thing goes down and it's one on one and two hits from Twin Needle later and we've claimed the seventh badge at the first time of asking. Now, 
if when I caught a level 9 Magikarp using a Master Ball didn't hurt you, this might. Because we go back to the PC directly after this fight, and we wave goodbye to our Master Ball catcher as we release it back into the wild. If that ain't a metaphor for how some reactions to the last video have made me feel, then I don't know what is. And yeah, this video is saltier than McDonald's fries. It's saltier than, than, than the socks under Plonkerboy 900's bed, especially after the last video being about Vaporeon. But nobody cares that I'd mentioned that at the start of the video. Oh no, it's all, you can't say that about Sabrina with a whip and Misty's character design. Like, come on, people. Actually, that might get you. That might get you in even more trouble. Maybe don't come on, people. But you know what I mean. That will be my final rant. So moving on, we've made our way down to the bottom of the seafloor cavern, and Maxi has finally given us one hell of a challenge. His team has only one change, and his Golbat has now become a Crobat. So congratulations to him. He knows a little thing or two about friendship levels. How? I don't know, because he's a prick. But you know. Ah, this fight, where do I start? Uh, Mighty N has got Intimidate still. That's a bastard. Camera up now knows a rock type move as well as I believe it still knows Ember, but um, that's a bastard. And oh, Crobat knows Air Cutter as well as Wing Attack. Hmm, can't see any problems happening with this fight. If you're wondering where I got all my salt from for this video, I got it out of a salt grinder, and that is exactly what we went through multiple times for this fight. The fucking grinder. There was no way around it. Um, we had to do it. We had to level up. We had to train. We had to do it all. There was more grinding in this section of the game than there was going on on the dance floors of all the clubs around Britain before this lockdown started. More grinding than you'd find on the poles in a gentleman's club. But we had to do it, and unfortunately it was a pain, but it didn't take too long with speed up, so there's a time save. Eventually I get fortunate enough to have a run that goes swimmingly, absolutely swimmingly, and it's after I stopped trying to use rage it's a useless move and we've reached a point where our attack stat is high enough that even having it lowered by one stage doesn't affect us too much so unfortunately it is time essentially for me to start looking at getting rid of rage and i know exactly what i'm going to replace it with so after beating maxi and watching him release growled on into the world we make our way to Setopolis, down into the cave of origin to fight Groudon. What did I do with Groudon? Did I run away? Did I fight it out? Did I catch it? No, I fought it out. I killed it for the XP reasons. But um, there's a legendary gone, people. That was all good and fun. And when we emerge from the Cave of Origin, having dealt with that situation, all of the houses in Setopolis are now open to us. So I go to the northwest side, the highest house in that corner. And in there we find a guy who looks like a fighting type trainer, and he gives you the TM for Brick Break. And Beedrill can, of course, learn Brick Break. That's why I'm telling you about it. And that will be our final move. We replace Rage with Brick Break, and that makes our four moves that will see us through the entire game. I'm certain of it. Levels-wise, who knows? But we do manage to get that and make our way through to Wallace. What sort of threat did the water type trainer have to us? Um, not a lot if I'm honest and that's reflected in the fact that I pretty much one shot the entire team to claim the 8th badge. I'll be honest I really wish there was more I could say about this fight but unfortunately there's not. There wasn't any sort of technical problems or, or difficulties or anything. It was just sludge bomb the hell out of the entire team. Twin needle maybe, I don't know. It was just, it was easy. It was too easy way too easy and that meant that we gained access to victory road and the fight at the end of it with wally oh he really didn't plan for this fight did he he has a team of what you would consider to be diverse pokemon but thanks to our move set every single one of them is weak to one of our three attacking moves which makes the fighters 
easy as anything. Not as easy as it could have been though, as you will see coming up in just a moment, because we've made it to the Elite Four. And with nothing else left to do, I jump straight into it because I just know that Sydney's not going to cause me a problem. We go in and we start the fight with Sydney, and just as I suspected, he doesn't really cause us a problem. Like I said about Maxi, Intimidate is no longer a massive problem for us. It's still an issue, but it doesn't affect us too poorly. Twin Needle being bug type moves and having a couple of Pokemon that are Grass Dark on his team and four times weak to bug means that every single one of them goes down to just a single use of Twin Needle each. That's how easy it was to beat the first member of the Elite Four. The second member, yeah that's not so easy. VB was toxic. She was absolutely brutal. I couldn't I couldn't do it at the level I was when I when I got there. So I had to go back and I had to do some grinding. I brought my zigzagoons along with me and they were massively helpful in accruing rare candies. I think in the grind that I did here and here alone, I managed to amass something like 14 rare candies. I was amazed. For some reason, my six Zigzagoon, when they all had items on them, I was getting like two or three rare candies a pop. And, well, there's... I can't really say much more. It was, it was fantastic luck. But that meant that we were able to get ourselves up to the level that we needed to go in to challenge Phoebe. And we kick it off. Now, the main issue that I found here was that we were kind of a little bit too fragile. Especially with that physical defense. And in Gen 3 ghost type moves are physical. The other issue was that one of her bayonet knew psychic and that hit hard as well. Everything was against me for this fight. It does eventually come down to finding out which move does more damage in the long run, the two hits of twin needle or sludge bomb, and in this case it's pretty clearly going to be sludge bomb. So essentially the tactic is sludge bomb the dust clops at the start until it's gone down if I remember correctly. Do the same on Bayonet, try not to die. When Sableye comes out, get the focus energy up and then just go from there and wail away. It was kind of simple when you got down to it. But we're halfway there now and the third member is Glacier and normally it's kind of a problem. But we've got Brick Break and Ice types a week to fighting if I remember correctly. So I essentially just Brick Break her entire team and one shot all of it. Yeah, third member of the Elite Four, third most powerful trainer in the region, one shot sweep. Can't argue with that. Fourth member was not a one shot sweep, nowhere near it. Took me multiple tries to try and get through Drake, he just... Oh, I hate him. The problem we've got is that if we get hit by Rock Tomb on Shelgon right at the start, we no longer have enough speed to beat the Flygon to the punch, which means it can either set up Sandstorm, it can flamethrower us, which hurts a lot, and eventually, even when we do get past them, we still have to deal with the Salamence, who knows fly, and that thing just is too much. Eventually, though, we do get a good run. We do, and we manage to make it through. I can't remember if I had to pop some rare candies or something for this fight. Somewhere in the back of my mind, it's telling me no, I didn't, but I'm no doubt going to let you know in post whether I did. Hashtag breaths a pleb either way, because I can't even remember the details of the fight that I wanted to remember. But look, eventually we managed to get past the Salamence, and Altaria comes out, and well, it's a done deal when that thing comes out. Sludge Bomb gets us the win, and it's only the champion left. This is where we had some problems. Let me quickly take you through Steven's team. He starts with a Skarmory that knows Aerial Ace. It also knows Spikes and Toxic. It's not going to use Toxic because I'm Poison type. I feel like this is a good point to mention that I've got the King's Rock held item equipped. I did most of this run without a held item, but for the Elite Four, I whacked it on. The extra flinch chance against Steven is probably going to be the difference between failure and success and there was a shit ton a metric shit ton of failure if we get lucky with flinches and critical hits we can get skarmory down in two shots and the key to that 
is holding out for hopefully one run where we take no damage. The chances of that happening are very slim. And at this level, it wasn't happening. Because even if we manage to do that, we still then have to fight the Cradilly. We still have to fight the Armaldo. Now, the Armaldo is where most of the problems came. Because getting hit by that stab ancient power hit like a truck. And I mean a truck. It can completely do us in for the rest of the fight. Even if we get past it, Metagross comes out next. And we can't tank a Meteor Mash. We can't tank a, a Shadow Ball. We are in trouble. Which means I, after many resets, and there are a lot of resets, I realise I've still got some rare candies in the bag. I don't have too many. I can't max my level out. But I pop every single one I've got. And I go back into the fight. And we get this run. About seven times after that so I was very lucky for starters I believe we managed to get our focus energy up which helps because we get a crit or a flinch or both it's one of those combinations but Skarmory goes down and we take no damage no damage at all as usual Cradilly comes out that thing's weak to twin needle that goes down Claydol comes out, that thing's weak to Twin Needle, that thing goes down in whatever order they came out. And then the Armaldo shows its head. Armaldo is a fantastic Pokemon, it's my favourite, one of my two channel mascots. It does some damage but it doesn't do enough, it doesn't do anywhere near enough. So when we sink that thing, out comes Metagross and boy oh boy. This thing I'd been worried. I, I'd reset several times at this point actually, but this time we get lucky. We managed to defeat the Metagross and that leaves out the final member, Agron. One brick break later, I believe four times weak to that actually, but one brick break later, we have beaten the champion, Steven, and because this is Pokemon Ruby, there is no post game fight, which means we have completed the game and our Beedrill takes its place in the Hall of Fame, deservingly so. Well, at the start of this video, I asked a relatively straightforward and simple question. Can you beat Pokemon Ruby with only a Beedrill? The answer is yes. Yes, you can. And actually, I was very surprised because part of me thought when we looked at the stats, that, especially with the move pool, that we would need to be max level. But no, this... Pitiful, pathetic excuse for a third form Pokemon is actually not half bad when you use it in the right way. I mean, don't get me wrong, its Mega Evolution is going to be ridiculously far superior forever, unless they nerf its stats, because Beardrill deserves more praise than I think it currently gets, and it was rather fun to do. So the question is, would I recommend this challenge? Do you know what? Yeah, I think I would. I might not redo it in Hoenn, one of the later generations, almost certainly it'd be a good Pokemon to give it a go. But I would recommend it. If you're looking for a new way to play through Ruby and Sapphire, and potentially even Emerald, use a Beedrill. It, you won't be let down. For anyone who might be wondering about the saltiness in this video, I apologize. I wanted to make this one a bit of a parody, a bit of a joke. I wanted it to be light-hearted and yet let everyone know. Please do voice your opinions. Absolutely, you have a God-given legal right as well to say whatever you like and I want to hear your opinions. The good, the bad and the ugly, I know I'm not for everyone and I know I tow a line that is very close to being an issue, but there are ways to do it. The comment that I have removed was abusive in nature and it was attacking me personally rather than the content I put out there. I stand by the jokes that I make. I would make these jokes in front of my mum and being real with you guys, I think that's a good benchmark to have in life. If you wouldn't say something in front of your mother or your grandmother, you shouldn't be putting it on the internet. You shouldn't be passing it off as just being a joke if you wouldn't say that joke to a close member of your family. But look, I want to make something absolutely clear. If 
I offend anyone in any way that is never my intention and I cannot apologise enough. Drop me a message on Discord, leave a comment, let me know what offended you and I will tailor my content to make sure that nobody feels personally attacked because I want a community of inclusiveness. I want everyone to be together and I know that sometimes I push the boat out a little bit. But overall, I hope everyone just enjoys my videos for what they are. A little bit of light entertainment on a Friday night to cap off the ridiculously horribly hard working week that we all have to go through, especially in times like these. So to cut a long story short, I hope you've all had a fantastic time. Please do slap that like button and subscribe for more content like this. They both really help the channel out. They're free, quick and easy to do. Make sure to drop a comment with thoughts, feelings, opinions and any challenge suggestions that you might like to see me take on in the future. And please, join me next time where I ask the question... Ah, you thought I was going back to that one now. I don't really know what I'm going to be doing next time, to be honest with you. I'm moving into a new flat tomorrow, or if this video comes out on Saturday today, or if this video comes out on Sunday yesterday. But this is a pretty busy moment in my life at the moment, and I don't know what I'm doing next week. But whatever it is, I hope it'll be fun, and I look forward to seeing all of you in the next one.